Okay, today I'm on chocolate chip. He's here because he's been tripping. Uh, so the first thing we figured out is that his feet were sore. He's barefoot, so I, um, his mommy gave me his boots. So I'm putting him in his boots all the time. Now, so far I've just been, he's walking away. I've just been uh, riding him here in the round pen because I want to give him a little bit better breaks. Um, but I've worked him on the ground, which you'll see in some of the other videos. He's, he was pacey when we first round pinned him in here. So I, um, I worked him over poles, got him trotting some to help separate his legs. So now uh, I'm going to work on the tripping, but I also want to work on his brakes and him giving to the bit. You'll see he's a little stubborn. She did teach him lateral flexion, so he knows how to do this. And I did this with the snaffle first. But he tends to like go out to lunch like some of the walking horses and then just lean on you. And some of these guys, I think, you know, people rode them with uh, too much pressure in their mouth or too much bit too early and the horse didn't understand. And then they get, you know, a little tough in the mouth where they ignore the bit. So I'm kind of taking him back. I want to make sure that he gives to the bit on both sides and that he gives vertically. And so when he does stuff like that, I don't give up. I just keep holding. Good job. But sometimes you got to be a little tough with some of them because they try to ignore you. And you, you know, some people think, well, am I doing it wrong? No, you're probably doing it right. It's just the horse is testing you. Like, I'm not going to do that. So there are lateral flexions better. I don't know how much you can see of this. And then we want to make sure our vertical flexion is good, which means when I put pressure on both reins that he puts his head down and doesn't pull on the bit. So I'm going to pull on one rein and then the other, and then we're going to wait. Good boy. So yesterday it was not so good. I did in the snaffle, but uh, we had a little communication <laughs> that he was like, I I'm, I'm not putting my head down. I'm just going to lean on the bit. So when they're backing up like this, you just ignore it. You make sure you're in a safe space and just hold until they stop and they stop leaning on your hands. But if you give when they're leaning on your hands, what do you think they learn to do? Lean. Okay. So in a minute, we're going to walk forward. We're going to do some um, bending circles to make sure he's given to this bit that she has. I did make it a little bit higher in his mouth. It was a little bit low in the kerchief. To do anything else it made the curb chain already tighter so as i'm making my circle i want to make sure he's not leaning on this bit and what you're going to see me do over and over again is stop and back up because i want him to respond really well when we say whoa so here we go whoa so we want immediately not 10 seconds later and some of the walking horses it takes a while for information to get to their brain and then they just you know ignore people and lean on them so we want to make sure when we say that word it really means stop so you practice it in the arena you practice it in your pasture you practice it on the ground you practice it on the trail you practice it all over the place but when you say ho that horse knows you mean ho and you know hopefully he'll stop for you but if you don't practice except in the arena it's not going to work whoa so he, he started to stop, but he's a little bit too slow. If you add the back up to it, they usually, the smart ones will figure it out pretty fast because they're like, I don't want to back up. I'd just rather stop. So a lot of going forward and backing up, but I'm also working on bending him, getting him to give to the bit. And then, you know, he shuffles his feet a little bit. He doesn't pick them up a whole bunch because we're just walking slow. And that's what a lot of these guys do when they got especially if they're pacey the pacey ones drag their feet more and also if they're um, pretty brave then they don't care about much so you know they're not getting anxious so they're not picking their feet up higher they just drag them and they get a little bit putsy and everybody thinks the horses are horrible it's just you got to get after them and you got to ride them <sighs> whoa so see it's getting better so that time i only pulled a little bit to back him up but he did stop at hoe but i want you know this is big horse and he's very heavy in the front end so when i say that i really want him to think oh i better run backwards good job buddy boy
Okay, so that's what I'm going to do for the next couple minutes, but I don't want to waste the battery, so I'll turn you back on in a little bit. But you see, so far he hasn't tripped in here, and there's there's no footing, and it is uneven. Uh, so now I'm doing some bending exercises, so I'm making that flower pattern since I just have this round bend right now. It's one of the easiest ones to do and to teach the horse in the beginning. Uh, so he doesn't bend well to the right. That probably has nothing to do with the tripping, but it could. You never know. Sometimes they have some arthritis in their neck, and that's why they're not bending so well. And so we want to try to supple that up just by helping him bend. Most of us don't do that when we're on the trail. It's something to be aware of. You can make some circles to the right when you're out on the trail and try to make him a little bit better at it. Uh, he leans on everything. I do have spurs on, so he can't lean on my leg, and I also stick in my hand so when I ask him to do stuff if he ignores me I can get after him or if he trips I can get after him so there's a little ledge right here which he did not trip on okay so now let's try another stop whoa good boy so he's stopping without me pulling on the reins but I'm still going back up so now I'm going to do a turn on the forehand so it's right rein right leg and then your other side just helps to guide the horse and when I ask him to move with my right leg, he moves his front end. So I'm tapping with my stick to get him to move his back end. He's like, I don't like you very much, Gay. Um, but you got to get the point through when they're not doing it correctly. Otherwise, they can't understand the rest. So a little right rein, a little right leg. When the hindquarter doesn't move, engage your stick. And there you go. Now I got a nice turn on the forehand. So I'm going to do it one more time, and then we'll try it the other way. So you look to the right, right rein, right leg. What do you know? I didn't have to hit him anymore. So see, I only had to hit him a couple of times and then he got it. So now I'm going to switch the stick to the left hand. We're going to try it off the left side. But when these horses come in, I'm trying to evaluate everything. He doesn't get it on this side either. Um, to make sure there's no holes, because a lot of the problems that people are having on trails, the other issues he's having could be because of this so if I'm gonna get it out after him out there I want to make sure they understand that I can turn their hindquarters or disengage their hindquarters and uh, no no pulling that they listen to me yeah good boy okay she said his side pass was not so good so let's try off the left leg it's quite good but again I did the turn on the forehand first so maybe he was confused now let's try it off the right leg it's nice that he knows some stuff so it's not as good off this side but he he's got it stick and spurs help a lot when horses are ignoring you good boy okay so now I'm gonna start working his flat walk but I'm gonna save the battery for a minute okay so his headset's pretty good, but he does get a little pacey. So as I go down the hill right here, I'm going to slow down by squeezing and relaxing on the reins. And if I feel I get really bouncy and he paces, I'm going to stop and back him up. I'm just connecting the pace with something not fun to do. Just the same thing with the hoe. So there he just paced. So the horse doesn't know it wrong. it's wrong and that you don't want it unless you associate it with something that's not so fun for him. So I back up and then they don't get a break. I just immediately go forward again. So some of the PC horses, when they get anxiety, they just they just pace more. You get them in a big group, they pace more. Now he's pulling on the bit and he was doing so good. So now I'm backing up again. When he pulls on the bit, I pause a little bit. Okay. So we don't, this is a big strong horse, so he, we do not want him pulling on the bit because we don't want him to get away with anything. In other words, take you for a ride. <laughs> so we want to make sure if he pulls on the bit, we associate that with something uncomfortable too, that he's taken over. So there is stuff on the left-hand side over here. So a lot of the horses get a little nervous. The nervous is okay, but we don't want him to drag us by it if he gets nervous. So his flat walk's not very fast, but again, he probably hasn't been ridden in this round pen much. So I have to keep him this speed though, so he doesn't get pacey. So I'm gonna flat walk for like the next five minutes and then I'll get back to you. So you'll see my hands are out in front of me. When I ride these, 
uh, walking horses. I always ride them with contact. They're big, lanky horses usually. And if you don't ride them with contact, they don't do so well. So if you ride them like this, oh, his gait already got worse because he's not collecting himself. He's not steering so well. Now he's pacing and then I can't really help him. So when you're gating, you want to make sure your reins are short, your hands are out in front of you. If you the uh, front of your saddle, which is the pommel or where the horn is, have your hands like three or four inches in front of that horn if you can't, unless you have really short arms, okay? And I want to frame him up a little bit because he was pacing, so the more I round him, the more it'll take him towards that trot. Uh, while I had the camera off, he stumbled once and I stopped and backed him up pretty hard because I want to associate it with something not so fun. So here's, he's getting a little pacey. That means on the lateral side, but he's not pacing, so it's just more uncomfortable. Okay, so let's try a hoe. Whoa, good boy. So I'm going to do that whoa at every speed I, I go with him. Um, I might even go super fast and pace him a little bit uh, just so you know when the energy comes up he he will stop no matter what unless he can gate faster but i don't know if he can so so now his flat walk has gotten much better but again i'm framing him up i guess my reins got a little long uh -uh, while i was talking to you so here he's a little pacey so i'm gonna stop whoa and i'm gonna back him up so i need to work on his whoa anyhow sometimes can be a little klutzy going backwards so they're only going to get better at it the more you back them up so um oh i have to practice my well anyhow and i don't want him to pee so i'm getting two things done at the same time okay so you see his head shaking up and down and this horse knows some stuff that he was trying to hide like oh i don't know how to do that he does your horse might be hiding stuff from you too. They pretend they don't know how to do it. It's just because you don't know the cues or you're not tough enough to get it out of them. And then the trainer gets on and goes, oh, look what he knows. Okay, so this is better. There, he just got a little pacey. Whoa, that wasn't such a good whoa. And he tends to pull on the right side of the bit. So when I stop, I engage that right rein. And if he pulls on it, I use a little bit of my spur to make it uncomfortable for him. Okay. So again, we're trying to correct everything. Um, something to do would be to check this horse's teeth. I'm sure she's gotten them done, but it'd be good for the vet when the next time he sees him, just to check the right side of his mouth and make sure there's no points or something that's bothering him. Okay. But now he has a pretty good flat walk. And this arena, especially for this big horse, is not so good. Um, for his running walk. So now I'm going to take him out there and we'll see if he's trippy out there as well. So I'm going to go up and down this and practice his running walk before I go out in the pasture. And there's some weird stuff over here. So you can let your horse look if he's brave, like this horse is brave. So you can let him look, but lay, make them do it at a standstill because these horses are classic for walking one direction and looking the opposite direction. So of course they can't see where they're putting their feet and they're not paying any attention at all. So if there's lots of stuff and you want to let them look, well, then stop and let him look. Let them really get a good look. And then after we look at this, we're not going to look at it anymore. It's like when you're driving, right? You can peek out the window for a little bit, but you can't stare out the window looking at the scene or you're going to crash into somebody. So it's the same thing with him, and he needs to pay attention to his feet. So this time I'm letting him look at everything, and then I'm going to turn around and start riding, and then there's no more looking. He's just got to keep his head straight so now i just tried to do a turn on the forehand out here and you know what he did he said i i don't turn to the right and i said yeah you do so that's why you test all the stuff in the arena and then you know if they're screwing with you out here but see he doesn't want to turn so i'm gonna uh do turn on the forehands at both ends and so we're gonna work on that too because that all comes into play when we need control of our horses and now that serpentine you see me doing the round pen, I'm going to do that down this hill because otherwise he's going to tend to get pacey and that serpentine will help to separate his legs. If you know how to leg yield, you can do that. If you know how to move their shoulders, you can do that. Okay. So I just keep turning him back and forth and keeping him slow because if he speeds up, he's going to start to pace. And I guess I'll keep you on while we do the turn of the forehand down here and see what he does for us. So we're going to try it to the left. 
Whoa. No, he didn't stop so well. So let's add it back up. Okay. Now we're going to turn left. Ah, you, you move from the spur. Okay. So we're going to flat walk. Then we've got to start somewhere. But he's pulling to the right. That's better. He's doing a short little gait. So this time, not very good at all, right? This first time, that'd be like, wow, that's not so good. So he's like, no, now you think you're scared? I walked him around here yesterday, he was totally fine, so I think he's faking it. He's just screwing with us, so we'll see. So now we're gonna turn to the right. He already doesn't wanna do it. There we go. That was better. Okay. You don't need to watch the serpentine, so I'll turn you off for a minute. Okay, so now we'll try it again. So I can't go to a running walk if I can't even get a flat walk out here. And he's just more anxious out here than he is in the arena. Okay, maybe somebody rode him really fast, and so that's what he is. So first I'm just gonna just gonna go back and forth working on his flat walk. I guess we're not doing a running walk today, dude. Okay. And I changed it up. I did a turn on the forehand back there to the right. Now I'm gonna do it to the left. Yeah, and now you can look at the pool. Boy, but if, he, if I didn't have these spurs on, he would be ignoring my leg and trying to screw around with me. Like, I don't know how to do that. But you test everything first in the arena. So you know what they know. And then you're like, hmm, no, you're not getting away with that. I just did a stop and a back up. Now I'm gonna turn on the forehand to the right. So right rein, right leg. He's not moving his hind quarter, so I tapped him twice with the stick. Why wow, are you getting really fancy with that? Okay. So we want to keep his head down. They probably racked him. We don't want to rack. We want a nice smooth gait to start with. And then we, if we want to rack, we want to move our way up to it. We don't want to just jump into that. So this is what we got for now. Okay, so far he has not tripped on any of this footing. But I'm going to go in the back and we're going to start um, just walking around back there, kind of being lazy and see what he does. Okay, so now I'm going to walk past all the horses. He's attached to his neighbor, which is a big, pretty pain. And he hangs with them all the time. And when his neighbor leaves, he screams for him. Although he's fine when I take him out. So I want to see what's he going to do when I walk by his neighbor. <laughs> Hi! So again, a little pacey down the hill. So this is his neighbor here. This is Smokey to the right. That's him. And see if he wants to try to go in a stall or anything. Oh, so that's good. Okay. So you'll see I'm just keeping his head straight. This is a flat walk. It's a slow one. And I'm gonna slow down as we go down the hill. Since this is in the way, well, oh, you didn't want to stop. Come on. Here. Um, anytime something's sticking out, you're teaching your horse to side pass, like so give it a reason for side pass. Okay. So a little pacey, so we're going to start weaving. looking around so again if he's looking at that stuff he's not going to pay attention to where his feet are so he uh, when he's looking around he gets his head up at least with me because again sometimes it's different with the owners but he gets his head up and he gets a little inverted and then he does like a little slow pace as we're going down the hill so I'm just going to keep weaving now we'll stop Oh, because again, we want to practice the stop. He got a crooked. So I'm going to let him look. So he can look now. He can turn his head side to side and then we're going to walk off. So every time I back up, you make your horses back up straight because uh, the day something happens on the trail and you got a cliff or something and you don't back up straight, they're going to be off of it. So always back up. Practice making them back up really straight or they go where you steer them. So now his walk's better.
Now this is pretty flat, so it's not very uh, stuff to make them trip. So we're gonna cut across the field. This field, may, there he's a little pacey. Whoa. And look, he's gone. You probably can't tell, but he's gone off to the right. Okay. So I fixed it. Nope, we're going this way. So this makes most of the horses trip, even the non-trippy horses. So it's a good place to test them. Now he's a little too fast. He's a little antsy. This is his first time doing this, so that's normal. And you're on the camera. Now he just trips, so what am I going to do? I'm going to back up. But that was one little trip, and that was uh, pretty minor for what the footing I'm going through. And then as I backed up, he wouldn't come out of it. I just asked him to go forward. He's like, no, no, I'm not going forward now. So I just turned him. So again, once you got tools in your toolbox, you can figure out things to do when the horse starts messing around with you, which they will. And they'll mess around with you. They'll mess around with the trainers. They test everybody. Because they want to see, do I, do I have to do this? Or can I just go back to my stall and eat and hang out with my friend? So let's try to stop. Whoa. So not bad, but he's going off to the right. I got the stick in my right hand, so I just guided him back. Good boy. And I want him to stop, so I just push my hands forward. I don't want you to leave yet. Yeah, you got to practice standing still if you want them to stand still. Okay, now we can go. So, um, when they're going backwards and they keep going backwards, lots of people think, well, pull, because pull means stop to the horse. No, if they're going backwards and you want them to stop, you either turn or you push your hands forward. He's pacing, so we're going to weave. And the only reason I think he's pacing is just nervousness. So they might be brave at home, but this is all new. There's a weird golf flag over there. At some point, this camera is going to run out, so. But again, there's holes all over this. I'm weaving because I'm trying to fix the pace. So all those things should make the trip. So here's a um, some dirt piles. So let's take them. Let's take you through the dirt piles and see what happens. Not bad. Everybody else is trying not to trip with their horses and I'm trying to make them trip. So again, I think the boots helped a lot. I think making him pay attention probably helped a lot. But we do have other work anyhow. Because he needs to relax. His gait needs to be better, and we need a better hole on him. So let's try another hole, because now we're facing back towards the stall. Whoa. Yeah. See, that time nothing happened. He's like, no, I'm going for home. I'm stopping. Yeah. Now, in the beginning, you can't make them stand long, but you can make them stand a little longer than they want it. And then when they're sitting there, then I'll just go off. So this guy needs some jobs because he's not relaxed. Now your horses always get used to your own property and stuff, so when they go to new places, they can be more antsy, but maybe he needs a supplement to try to help him too. He got nothing to lose by trying to call me supplement to help them. Okay, so now we're going back. So he's hitting some holes, but he's not really tripping. He doesn't like this trailer over here. Whoa. So now he's going off to the right. So let's back up. And we don't want him to think he can run away from stuff. You can look at it. a chance I'm gonna I walked him around the front pasture but not the back pasture so I'm gonna walk and walk around this back pasture to help him a little bit because he's pretty nervous to show him stuff and 
make it more comfortable for them. And then we'll see if there's any improvement. The other thing I'll probably do is lunge them out here. Lots of people don't think of that, but if there's a place on the trail that's big open area, you can lunge your horse on it. I get them used to being out there and that way you're not on the back. Now, I don't know if he was a show horse, but to me, he feels a little bit like he was because some of these guys are a little antsy out on the trail. Not all of them, but you know, they're bred with a little bit more spirit in them. And so it takes a while to get them to calm down and do this job, even though they can be pretty brave because they've seen so many things. But they tend to be a little bit more antsy, a little bit um, harder in the mouth. But that's just what I've seen. Doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> okay. So I'm just weaving back and forth because he's still a little antsy and still a little pacey. So let's try our stop again. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> he thought about it that time. But nothing happened. So see how he had a pretty good hole when I left the arena. But he doesn't out here. So we got to practice it because if we don't practice it, he can't get any better at it. And if we don't practice it, I don't know he's bad at it. So this is a, an even. We walked on the other footing, which we could do some more, but he was pretty good even with all these gopher holes and stuff. Now, this isn't the trail, so when I get him on the trail, it might be a totally different story. But so far, I just see he's antsy, he's not paying attention, and those both could um, add to the tripping. And then he gets pacey as he gets antsy, and pacey horses tend to trip more. So now we're pacing, so we're going to stop. <sighs> Whoa. Yeah. And I always have to use a little extra right rein or right leg when I back him up, otherwise he's crooked. No. Nope. So now that we're headed back towards the barn, he's getting even more amped up. So might have to go ride him in a stall to show him that's not so fun to be back at the barn either. But at least we're going uphill and that should help with the paciness. So this is good. I got this better speed of a flat walk. Good job. Good job, buddy. He's like, did all the other horses see all this crap? They all did. They were scared too. So we're going to stop. Good place to side pass him because he's scared. Look, he's just side passing all the way home. He was going to the left, so we're going to go to the right. He really tried to go the opposite of where they're showing me they have talent. But he side passed very nicely to the left when he got scared of that object. Okay, so now we're going to go back and ride by his friends. Because there's... There's a definite attraction that he doesn't want to be out there by himself, at least on my pasture. He opened back up. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, now this is the right side, so this could be bad. So he's going forward instead of sideways. There he goes sideways. Good job, bud. Good job. So not great, but pretty darn good. You're only going to get better. At least he knows it. Most of them don't know any of that when they come here. So his stall's coming up. I'm just kind of drop my reins. See where he goes. 
Oh, good. He wants to go in his stall. So, what they don't realize is that we can ride him in here. Yeah, hi, Smoke. Yeah, we're going to do some turn on the forehand. Looks like I don't know if she's going to ride me in here. So, if you got a big enough area and your horse wants to go to a stall, let him go. You can just ride him in there. Again, you're trying to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing not easy or uncomfortable. So, I need to do more turn on the forehand. And I know they're not fun, so I might as well just do them here. Oh, you know what we could do, too? Come over here. This will be fun. It's, we'll look at Smokey, and then we'll side pass to the right. So, we want to go into the electric wire. Now we'll side pass to the left. That was pretty good. Now we'll side pass to the right. Good boy. Okay. Now we'll see if he'll leave. If he turns and he doesn't want to leave, he'll just do something else more annoying. Oh, good. Good, good decision, buddy. Really good. Get me out of there. All right, so it was pretty good for the day. It's hot, so I don't want to overdo it. He's a black horse. So what I'm going to do is take him down here where it was scary, and I'm going to graze him. So I'm going to make this more enjoyable for him in a stall not so enjoyable for him okay but you'll see that's what i got for gate and stuff i don't have anybody to videotape me from the ground but, so i don't know if you can see when it's bouncing or not but that's the best i can do so i'm sure it helps some of you learn something with me blabbing the whole time all right remember you can ask questions and stuff i know a lot of you guys don't but you can if you want to if i have time i'll answer them 